welcome to our channel Encyclopedia of Chess. In this video, we have one of the masterpieces of the Romantic Chess era. At this time in the history, chess was characterized by the attacking and tactical style and open playing, where most of the openings were represented in the King's Gambit and the Italian game, and other openings of the King's Pawn with a dynamic character. And that is because the strategic concepts of chess have not yet evolved. Rarely do we find openings that make playing closed, such as Queen's Pawn, openings or semi-closed playing such as Sicilian defense or French defense. The games were like chess puzzles, it were based on tricks and the traps, rather than long-range strategic planning and positional playing, and filled with amazing and wonderful sacrifices. When you analyze the games of this time, you will find out the need for a strategic understanding of chess. You will notice how the forces of the attacking player collapse without, without controlling the center and without occupying strategic places by his pieces. His reckless attack will leave behind a lot of weaknesses that can be exploited by his opponent who secured the king and took control of center and mobilized his forces to attack. Some of the most famous players of this time we have Paul Murphy, Adolf Anderson, Henry Bird and other great chess masters. This game was played between Adolf Anderson and Lionel Kieseretsky at 1851 Berlin. Adolf Anderson was a German chess master. He won the great international tournaments of 1851 and 1862. Accordingly, it is generally considered that it was the first world champion in chess from 1851 to 1858, although the title of world chess champion did not exist yet. Lionel Kieseretsky was a Baltic German chess master and theorist, famous for his contributions to chess theory. Kieseritsky is the same name of many openings and variations, such as Kieseritsky Gambit, Kieseritsky Attack and Boden Kieseritsky Gambit. The game starts with e4, e5, f4, King's Gambit. The most popular moves are e takes f4, d5 or bishop c5. E takes f4, king's gambit accepted, bishop c4, queen h4 with a check and attacking the king. The main reason why players abandon this dangerous opening is that it makes the king weak and vulnerable to an early black attack. King f1, b5. The idea behind sacrificing the b5 pawn is to banish the bishop from the dangerous a2 g8 diagonal and relieve the pressure for the f7 pawn which is a weakness in a black position. b takes b5, knight f6, knight f3, queen h6, d3, 9 h5, 9 h4, queen g5, knight f6, c6, g4, 9, knight f6. Now the pawn and the bishop are attacked. Things looking normal so far. White will go with his bishop to a4 or c4, but white preferred to protect his g4 pawn and played rook to g1 and sacrificed his bishop. Rook g1, c takes b5, h4, queen g6, h5, queen g5, queen f3. It seems that the black queen is about to be taken. It has no squares left to move. Black plays knight g8 in order to make room for the queen's escape. And here the white's intentions and why he sacrificed his bishop are shown. He was trying to hand the black queen. Bishop takes f4, queen f6, knight c3, bishop c5 attacking the rook 
knight d5, queen takes b2, bishop d6. Now, if bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop with a check. If king f8, queen takes f7, checkmate. And if king d8, knight takes f7, check. King e8, knight d6, check. King d8, queen f8, checkmate. So black played bishop takes, rook g1. e5, queen takes, rook a1 with a check. White sacrificed his rooks. Now we should ask ourselves, what is the point? Why Anderson don't care about his pieces? Let's take a look at the position to understand what's happening. The white has a stifling control on the center. The d knight and bishop occupy two strong advanced posts and press hard on the black king. The other knight participates in the siege of the, of the black king. The white queen is strong on the long white diagonal and the f5. On the opposite side of the board we notice that the black has lost the game strategically. The light pieces are inactive and still in their places. The king is not safe in the center. The queen and the dark squares bishop are far from the events. This is exactly what was Anderson looking for? He sacrificed material in exchange for activity and initiative. The sacrifice is known as positional sacrifice and it is quite different from the tactical sacrifice whose steps can be calculated to find out his purpose which often results to winning a material or checkmate. The positional sacrifice is ambiguous because we cannot see its purpose directly. It makes a strong position or weakens the position of the opponent by achieving one or more strategic advantages that leads to victory if this advantage was exploited correctly. King e2, knight a6, knight g7, check, king d8. The trapped king on d8 has no safe square left to survive. If white could put his bishop on e7, it will be checkmate. But the knight on g8 prevents white from doing so. That is why white has to eliminate the defending knight. Pause the video and try to find the winning move. Mm, yes, of course. Queen f6. Check. Now black have to take the queen. This is the only move. Bishop e7 checkmates. White wins. Thank you everyone for watching. Subscribe and like if the video was helpful. And see you in a new episode. Goodbye everyone.